Hello and welcome race fans to a new episode of Pure Racing Pit Reporters and we have another driver here today confirmed for the 2024 season. Vladimir Sorces from Cyprus is here racing the Academy Motorsport Alex Caffey Motorsport number no. 5 car. Vladimir, how is it over there? Hi Andre, thank you for the invitation. Everything is good, we are getting ready for the next season already. Uh, many staff, many sponsorships, commitments during the off season. So it's it's a crazy period like everyone, but we are keep going, everything is well. Ah, you already said one point that's really interesting for myself um, to investigate a little bit because I saw you on social media doing a lot of work, um, official press release, official press conference to confirm you for the next season. We know already you are very fast on a racetrack. We know that you're a committed race car driver, but I think you set an example on social media what it's like for a driver to work on different things, not only racecraft, not only pace, but also to find the right partners, to find the sponsors, to get the budget to race. Can you give us a little bit of an insight what you're doing during winter to get those partners on board? Well, as I am saying also in Cyprus during the interviews is that the financial part, unfortunately, from the other side, it's it's a good thing. It's the most important thing. Um, and uh, maybe uh, drivers have to spend more time on those things uh, than driving at the end. Um, of course, it's a, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good thing that, um, I mean, it helps the driver to improve. And uh, this is um, what we are doing 10 years now in Cyprus with my career. Uh, it's just to bring motorsport more in the society because uh, as is well known and like in most of the countries, football is, uh, I mean, is, is the first first sport. So uh, now in Cyprus, most of the people know what is NASCAR, what is Euro NASCAR. And um, of course, those uh, sponsorships commit, commitment helped me a lot as this year also I had the support of Ministry of Tourism and we are bringing them logo of uh, Love Cyprus around Europe uh, and at the same time uh, just yesterday uh, we have the publishment of a road safety campaign uh, which gives many messages before Christmas and uh, the, the most important message is the, that uh, as drivers I mean as racing drivers maybe we we are speeding in the racing tracks, but in the, in the normal roads, uh, our eyes must be to the road and not on the mobile phone. So there are many things that now off season I am running with and, and I am happy to be involved. And uh, all, all these things, of course, give the opportunity to the people to see who is Vladimiros or uh, generally racing drivers that are doing uh, all that stuff in social media because in our days unfortunately uh, it's important <laughs> <laughs> yes definitely it is and that's why we're also talking here to bring people like you racing drivers more to the people and there i want to start i want to start really really early today because we saw you racing in 2023 but the passion for racing started way, way earlier. Can you tell me how you got into motorsports, having the passion to race those cars fast around tracks around the world? Well, my father, he was a motorcycle rider. Then he switched to rally cars. Then I'm born and uh, the line, let's say, continued. Uh, from the age of five, uh, I had the opportunity to watch a race in Cyprus of go-karts. And, and the question came from my father, if I liked it, of course, I was not crazy to answer no, I answer yes. And uh, it was the time that uh, I got I got involved in, in motorsport. From the age of seven, I started doing uh, local races in Cyprus. Then I had the opportunity to represent my island in the international Rock cup finals in lonato italy and uh, then uh, an opportunity came from uh, formula Four north europe zone which was uh, under fia uh, 
And in during 2016, 17, I had the opportunity to race with SMP Racing, uh, a team that was participating. And um, then the opportunity of Formula Renault Eurocamp came up, uh, where I had the opportunity to race with uh, Oscar Piastri in 2018, Logan Sargent, um, big names that we are now we we see now that they are in Formula One. And uh, in 2019, when also the pandemic started. It was really difficult for the island and generally for the athletes in the island to find the support. Um, by my searchings in the internet, the EuroNASCAR recruitment test day came up in, in my eyes and I took this opportunity to, to get involved. There are many, many successful moments during all this year. There are many details. Um, and uh, yes, with my results now in Euro NASCAR, it's getting even better. And uh, I hope next year we will, a we will be able to be in the top three of the Euro NASCAR Pro standings. Amazing. The driver recruitment program is already set uh, for November in 2023 as well to find drivers for 2024. It's a good opportunity to join Euro NASCAR for sure and make the first steps inside of those cars. You said you've raced in different series, but Euro NASCAR offers a special experience around the tracks in Europe because packed grandstands, open garages, open paddocks, open grid walks, you're very, really, really close to the fans. Just describe me as a as a race car driver who is focused on being the fastest on the track, but also is trying to sell products for the sponsors, for the partners. How is it to be in the Euronask environment and why is it so special for you? Well, it's very special. As I mentioned also in Cyprus, is the, are the only years in motorsport that I saw so many spectators. Even if I was racing in Formula Renault Euro Cup, racing the same weekend with Formula One in Monte Carlo or uh, Formula Four, the spectators in Euro NASCAR is, is unbelievable, even more in Brands Hatch, which is the biggest event every year. Um, it's very important for us, for the racing drivers, but more, more, more for the sponsors. I mean, uh, sponsors, of course, want to see a championship that attracts and to see this opportunity that is coming from USA to give a special opportunity for drivers that maybe didn't have the chance in single seaters in Formula 3 or Formula 4. It's very important to, to see that Euro NASCAR is doing something different, like in USA. and. Uh, is giving so many opportunities for the drivers to reach their goal, uh, which mainly most of the drivers uh, have as a goal the Euronas the USA pathway from Euronaster. Yeah. Um, when you're in the paddock and you have all the fans around you, does it feel like being the the superstar, the shooting star, the rock star? I know, but I think it, it's nice, you know, to see people coming to you, to all the drivers, even if you are last, even if you are in the mi middle of the of the grid, you know, it's so special. You, I mentioned, I am mentioning every time that you have to come, come to a race weekend to understand what Euronascar is by saying, by watching a video. <laughs> It doesn't make uh, it doesn't make so much uh, essence, yeah. you know. But by being there to see how people are coming, for example, in Vallelunga, there are where people coming into my pit box, taking bumpers, and after they were uploading stories in Instagram with the bumper in front of their bed, they took tires from other teams to put like, uh, and they create a, an ask. Car, car uh, with their bed so it, it, it's crazy <laughs> totally crazy yes so nice yes uh, i yeah. saw so many interesting things in the past uh, seven years that i'm now working with your nasca it's just amazing people going away with 
somehow complete cars at some point. It's <laughs> totally crazy what's going on there. But we have to talk also about the yeah. 2023 season. Or do you have something? Sorry. Yeah, and you know what is uh, is very nice. The, um, I mean, generally the Brands Hatch race weekend when you see people coming from Friday to take their place and prepare everything to get ready for the weekend. Yeah, and I am saying it's not Formula One. I mean, it's it's Euro NASCAR. It's not, of of course, at the level of Formula One. But you see that people know what is Euro NASCAR and what Euro NASCAR tries and is doing very well until now to promote their drivers as much as possible to USA. Yeah, I experienced uh, something really cool in my home race when we went back to Oschersleben, to Germany. First time Oschersleben, but back to Germany. And I was visiting the camping grounds and a lot of people doing exactly what we see in the US at the racetracks, coming with the campers, having nice parties. And they know exactly what's going on. Who are the drivers? What are the cars? What are the teams? So they are really passionate and in, really invested in the series. And they all love what you race. And that's what I wanted to say before, let's talk about the 2023 season because you were pulling double duty in both uh, series. You were racing in UNESCO Pro and UNESCO 2, planning to just race UNESCO Pro, but you started winning and winning and winning in UNESCO 2 and you dominated the first half of the season. Then something happened in the second half that you were not competitive anymore that you were able to keep the lead against Paul Giffreau, but that's part of racing. But just talk us through the season, what happened there in your NASCAR 2 with you and your team? Well, by performance, it was, I think, by, by blood, it was excellent through all the year. Uh, this is what I mentioned again. Um, now, the mechanical issues are always part of motorsport. And uh, if If you are professional, you have to accept them when they came. Unfortunately, the mechanical issues at the second half were, were too, too many. I mean, uh, the team tried a lot. The, I mean, I don't have a complaint about it. Um, but we were <laughs> crazy unlucky because they were fixing one thing. Another thing was um, broke down. Yeah. So it was like a non-stop of bad luck. But anyway, um, we show our pace. We show that uh, uh, Vladi is fast uh, when the car is working well. And um, the first races were amazing. We showed our ready pace. But, you know, when the car designs decides something else, the driver cannot do something more. And... Uh, Performance is performance, but sometimes the luck is luck. So I am happy with myself, with my team, because I saw that they gave their best um, to put me on the grid, especially in uh, at, in Germany, where, where we lost everything, because I was feeling that if uh, we will not fix the issues in Germany, of course, we will not manage to win the championship in Belgium. And I was feeling that it's coming. I mean, it was so much bad luck back to back that it was not normal uh, in the uh, in the mind. But we the the speed is there. You know, this is the most important. Uh, one journalist in Cyprus after the when the season end, he mentioned in an article that the points at the end of the day are not important is uh, the most important is the, are the results. So this is what uh, I keep, keep as a driver and I focus on the next year. The next year, good um, thing to talk about right now because you re-signed with Academy Alex Kaffee Motorsport. We will be back with the team that shows that you trust those guys because Stefano Bacci, Alex Kaffee, Federico Monti, they're doing an incredible job in the paddock to not only pre uh, provide you a fast car, to have a professional racing team, but also to have a lot of fun, to interact with the people and to, yeah, have a big family around you. That's what I absorbed, uh, observed from my point of view. Um, the goals for 2024, you're going to race in Euronasca Pro. You're going to go against the elite of Euronasca drivers from all around the world, big names. So what is your plan to do there? 
Well, as mentioned before, of course, my my goal is the top three, but my main goal is the is the title, of course, because we showed from Valencia even from round one uh, that we are fast also in Euro NASCAR Pro. Uh, I was more unlucky this year in Euro NASCAR Pro with the mechanical issues, uh, if you will see. Uh, that's why we manage after Valencia uh, race to where, where I had the contact with uh, Vittorio and Girelli. I managed to climb back in, at the half season up to P6, I think, or yeah. But uh, uh, then again, we have the mechanical issues which cost us and we went back uh, at, the, at the standings. Um, we show our pace, so my main goal is to, I mean, as a driver to have as many podiums as possible next year. Uh, stable results, uh, as I showed as a driver that uh, I have consistent uh, results. And um, as much as on the top as possible, you know, this is the, the main goal. And of course, our team, together with my team, we are, we've, focused a lot to avoid what we faced at the last rounds this year uh, because Academy was in P2 championship standings of the teams um, before Germany, but then we went down to P4. So we, I believe to them because they were the first guys that, that they stand next to me coming from an island. It was very difficult to to race in Euro NASCAR. And they show me that uh, they believe in Vladi and uh, they want to win. Uh, it's a new team. It's uh, normal that there, there will be issues, there will be unlucky moments. But I think uh, every round this year was a lesson. So next year, I am positive that everything will be fine. Yeah. One last question for today. Um, what was a funny or very interesting story you had in the last season? Because when I think back about interacting with your team, I think I have a funny story. It was live on stream, so I can tell it again. Federico Monti and Alex Caffey got some beer after a win that you brought home. And I stole a beer from one of your team bosses. And... Uh, That was really, really funny because afterwards we had a little bit of a discussion. I brought him back, of course, one of the beers, but on stream he gave it to me. So, um, and I said, where's my beer? And he said, okay, no, no, it's yours. So Federico Monti is always there to have some fun. Alex Caffey, fun guy, really nice persons around the paddock. So if you think back, do you have a special story in mind where you were laughing, having good jokes or something very interesting happening? Well, I mean... Uh... Uh, Mr. Federico Monti is my teacher for opening the champagnes on the podium, of course. <laughs> yes. As you as you so many times, I have, I have troubles with the with the champagne, and I ask many times to the organization to have it ready at least to don't spend so, so much time. Uh, this is the funny story every time on the podium, a strangling to open the champagne. But the and different and funny funny thing this. A uh, year was in Vallelunga, uh, looking at a small guy coming into my pit box. He he took a package and he cut it. Mm -hmm. And he put my name, surname and number. And he was standing with uh, with this uh, package uh, cut it, uh, in front of the of the pit box. This was funny. And uh, at the same time, uh, I appreciate it a lot as he was a local Italian. And of course I didn't expect it because in, in Vallelunga we have a lot of uh, fans of uh, my friend Alberto Nasca and it was something uh, something new. Uh, but uh, now we, we have a very good uh, um, how to say, connections with this, with this kid. As two weeks ago, I was in Napoli for my contract and I met him also there. 
so a friendship started without to you know without to expect it yeah one one last thing i have one question on the podium you're doing this special pose with the legs spread you jump into the air doing something like this what is the source of this because we have a lot of nice pictures of it yeah it came unexpectedly in, in valencia and uh We decide that uh, this move will be my winning move. So, yeah, I mean, it it show it shows a lot of things that you cannot see behind the behind the you know the wheel. Yeah. Uh, so it means power. It means winning. It means many feelings that uh, a driver is going through to reach this result that are not visible outside you know yeah there are many things to control for a driver to participate and i at the same time to to succeed i really like it i really really like it uh thank you so much for joining us because we are running out of time so um vladimir sorts will be back with academy alex coffee motorsport in 2024 so watch out for him in the year nasca pro i always do this because but you're there on the screen um Thank you so much for coming here. Take your time. And I hope you have a really, really nice winter and we will see you back in full strength when we have the track in Valencia. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andre. See you soon.